college basketball is where it's at. Kansas, four over Nova, 133 is the over-under. This has gone down a tick from four and a half. Bry, what do you think it would be if Justin Moore was available? What do you think this line would be? Ooh, uh, one or pick them. You think so, huh? That much? Yeah. Harry, what do you think? I was thinking Kansas, two. Yeah. Uh, there, what I, I would think. Yeah, you know, it's two. a good point. I I just read an article. I didn't really read it. I just saw the title of the article, so I didn't really read the article. But it said something like uh, Villanova without more for themselves personally. It's like a seven point difference without what? them in the lineup. Oh, oh, oh points per games. But for points the, per games. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. In terms yeah. of the swing of points, it's like seven points right, without right. him in. I think it would be one and a half, two somewhere. And I don't know. My, my point yeah. is everyone's counting them out. Like this is, it would only be a toss up anyway, if he was in the lineup and now he's not. And it's only ticked up to four. Um, I don't know. Look, all my money is on Nova. So I'd love to see it. I want to cash that 20 to one. I want to cash uh, the Gillespie. I think it was 28 to one for uh, most outstanding play, which we figured out starts tomorrow um, uh, because they have odds on those. And we'll get into those, but I'm taking Nova here. I know they win ugly. They shot 28% and, uh, and won against Houston. They've allowed, I mean, it's going to be defense, right? Uh, I know he's one of the better rebounding guards, Justin Moore is, but I believe Jay Wright has a plan. He's got a nice rotation yeah. of guards. Um, they've allowed 65 or less in eight straight games. And Kansas, you know, been playing great, but they could be stifled. You know, they only had 66 against Providence. They put up some clunkers, 29 the first half against Miami before they mm-hmm. routed them, 64 versus TCU, 62 against Kentucky, 62 against Iowa State. I know I'm cherry picking here, but the point is it's not an impossible task to slow down Agbaji and, and Remy Martin. Uh, Caleb right. Daniels playing well. He'll be nice to rotate in. Chris Archie Diacono going to get more than his 10 minutes. Jermaine Samuels. We're going to figure out the Samuels Daniels thing in a minute. Uh, South region, most <laughs> outstanding player playing well. Got some overachievers in there. 61 57 Nova wins. Grab the under Harry. You like it under as well. I'll ride with that and score. So yeah, I like the under. Uh, I've been pretty good in the uh, tournament here with my totals too. I'm going to go under 133. Mentioned no Justin Moore for Nova. Second leading score for the cats. Kansas was tremendous in their second half versus Miami in the elite eight game, holding the Canes to just, 15 points and only one team has scored more than 65 points versus Kansas in their last eight games. Meanwhile, Villanova's defense, we've said this a couple times now on past shows, their defense has been suffocating. They've held opponents to 61 points or less in six straight games. And in those six games, they've held their opponents to an average of just 54 points a game. Give me the under at 133. It's a different, by the way, I should point out, Harry. Um, I and mean, I don't know that it posted yet. Uh, Megan Connolly, your extra points nemesis has, the Nova game under as her mega lock of the week. Yo, you, you always oh, like to make fun of her picks and you guys well, are riding together the same train we, here. We've been, uh, we've been, uh, she, she told me she likes it a lot too. So, so, uh, that's okay. Like the end of uh, okay. last time, last time they met, and I know you don't like this when I give these stats out, but last time these two teams met in 2020, the final was 56, 55. So totally the same thing. Exactly the same thing. <laughs> How many on the court? The same two. Last uh, well, was on the court. These are the kinds of stats that get your ticket into the final game. All right. Uh, Brother Bry, you like the Harry's bet, but more the first half. I kind of like this too. Yeah, I like, you know, I do like Harry's, but I like the under 61 and a half. You know, we've seen a ton of really low scoring games in the tournament, but so, especially in the first half. Mm-hmm. Like, so Nova Houston was 47, that Nova Michigan was 59. Kansas Providence was only 43. You know, Nova, Nova already, they walked the ball up the court. And, you know, and with more out for this game, I think they're going to try to lower the possessions uh, even more. So uh, I think you can expect a low scoring game. And then now now we've talked about this before. You put this in a huge dome, right? So this is this is right. in a big dome. You'd expect poor shooting kind of out of the gate. Uh, so spe- that's why I especially like the under 61 in the 61 and a half in the first half. Yeah, the fir- yeah, they're shooting into the stadium lights. Already yeah. these teams have had trouble shooting, especially against Villanova, like yeah. you said. I This used to be a great trend, Brother Brian. I haven't dug it up because I don't think it's as... That's uh, good, right, right? Yeah, right. it's not as successful as it's been in years past. But first half unders in both Final Four games um, has been good. Uh, and, I mean, and, and you can't ask for a better defense with Nova. I get the whole 
uh, I get the whole Justin Moore thing, but I like this parlay kid. You're with Nova boy. I feel like we're all with Nova here. Well, so you and I, I think from the start have been yep. uh, touting Nova mm-hmm. uh, thanks to their um, defensive wizardry for sure. Uh, they got a great coach. Uh, look, I think give getting four here. I, I like it. I, I more or no more. I think you have to take the points in this case um, because like, as Brian said, I think this is, this game might trend towards the under, which only favors Nova and it favors the team getting the four points. Uh, Wright will have a great game plan uh, for his team. Um, obviously, uh, Kansas is uh, ultra talented, but uh, Nova likes to, uh, they like these games to be a bit ugly and I think they'll make it ugly. Uh, they'll make Kansas play at their tempo. Uh, and I think, uh, so I'll take the four because I think this this game is uh, close all the way. All right, let's go to our props here. It should be a fun one. Um, well, I don't know if you, uh, those listening, remember my bet ache, but I had, uh, I thought I had Jermaine Samuels as a top scorer in the game against Houston. He went ahead of, what was it, Taz Moore, um, <laughs> 16 15 in the final minute. I'm jumping up and down. I cashed a 10 to 1 ticket. No, I had Caleb Daniels. Um, I didn't have Jermaine Samuels, similar sounding name. Not exactly. You know, it's not like brothers, one initial off Jermaine Samuels, Caleb Daniels, my fault. I'm an idiot. Guess what I'm doing? Jermaine Samuels, top scorer plus four sixty. Uh, <laughs> Samuels 55 in the last three games. Uh, I, I think actually think like a 12 or 13 points can win. This could be, you could be the top scorer with, 12 or 13 points. He's going to have to step it up. He's going to shoot more, I think, with more out, with Justin Moore out. And by the way, I'm not an idiot. I'm taking both because I know Caleb Daniels will be the top scorer. So Caleb Daniels plus 850, but my official pick is Jermaine Samuels plus 460. (laughs) Caleb Daniels 31 the last three. Jermaine Samuels 55 in the last three. If you could figure out what the hell I just said, God bless you. But the pick is Jermaine Samuels top scorer plus 460. Brother Bri, you like Samuels also, but in the rebounding department. Yeah, I'm going to go Samuels over seven and a half rebounds. Look, Villanova doesn't have a ton of size, but they rely on a committee, right, to rebound. So, And, and Samuels mm-hmm. has been their best rebounder uh, kind of by far. And then with more out too, the, somebody's got to pick up the slack there. Yep. So more rebounds for others. Um, you know, but his rebounds have been way up recently. He's had eight or more rebounds in six of his last seven games. The one game he missed out on, he had seven. So I think again, like I was just saying before, I think you're going to see a ton of missed shots in this one, uh, which is going to lead to a higher rebounding total. So I'd take Samuels over the seven and a half. There you go. Parlay kid. I think I had this last week, uh, Gillespie over four. Oh no, I had four and a half assists, but you're betting Gillespie over four and a half rebounds. I think it's probably similar reasoning to brother Bry's pick, right? Yeah, exactly, Sal. Um, I think Gillespie, uh, I think he's had 11 total in his last two games. Uh, I mm-hmm. think with Moore out, who's a pretty decent rebounder himself uh, for yep. his position, uh, there's just collectively we're going to have to rebound better as a team. Gillespie's a team guy who'll do whatever it takes to win uh, this game. Uh, and we expect a lot of missed shots, especially early. So uh, I like the over four and a half for a guy who's just – He's he's a winner, Gillespie, and he'll do whatever it's going to take. So even if he's not scoring or doing something, else, he will do those little things, and rebounding will be one of them. So let's take the over four and a half here. Harry, you like Agbaji under 17 and a half. I wonder if you go all these guys unders. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. I just wonder if, if you like the under anyway, and you, can, you have a shot at betting like eight players under, will you, could you go six and – Two, uh, maybe one of them goes way over, and then uh, you know, like I guess it could right. go the other way anyway. But go ahead, explain yeah, those. No, I, I, I like uh, the adjusted number at uh, seventeen and a half at minus one forty eight. He's averaged eight nineteen the season, but hasn't been that great lately, especially in the tournament. He's gone under eighteen points in four of his last five games, and in those five games, he's averaged just thirteen points per game, shooting just twenty five percent from three point range in the tournament, and hasn't gone, hasn't drawn a lot of fouls and gone to the line. He's only got. Five free throws in four games, not getting to the line a lot. I like him under 17 and a half points, especially against his Villanova defense. All right, let's go to the the nightcap, the big one. Duke, North Carolina. Blue Devils, four-point favorite also. 151 over on, under, way uh, higher than the uh, Nova Kansas, 18 points higher. Uh, Duke's favored by four. This highly anticipated matchup, obviously Coach K against his rival. You look at the numbers. What are they've met? How many times? It was, isn't it? Someone taped. Someone sent Three, us. Ninety-nine a, times, right? Ninety-nine. Yeah, this is the hundredth time. 
This, this is, is number one hundred. This is that's incredible. I think it's going to be the highest rated live sports or sports entertainment program on TBS since um since Pistol Pez Watley slapped Bulldog Buzz Sawyer and beat him twice on uh, Georgia Championship Wrestling, nineteen eighty five. That was for you, our Frank. I don't know if Frank's listening there, but <laughs> I'm going Duke. I could see this going a bunch of ways. Everybody wants to lean on the Cameron Indoor, the big loss and everything. Don't forget, Duke beat them by 20 in February, right? Uh, in Chapel Hill. That And the difference was A.J. Griffin. He had 27. And then in that rematch, he posted five. He's having a good tournament. 46 in this tournament. There's a lot of overachievers in this tournament. I think more so on the North Carolina side. I mean, Jerry Ro- Jeremy Roach is playing out of his mind. But uh, Carolina's point guard, Caleb Love, is ridiculous. I mean, what his game against UCLA to get them where they are is one for the ages. I don't think he keeps it up. I don't know about Brady Manick. He averaged 15 this season, and now he's 22 in the tournament. I think they slowed down a little bit. Uh, it's a good game. Duke, I think, blows it open with four minutes left. Now, if they revert to being 130th defensively in the last month, it's going to be a problem, but I don't think so. I think he's going to have them focused. I'm going Coach K, 79-70, and then we're going to have to watch Monday to see if K can cut down the nets. Parlay Kid, you agree with me? I agree, Sal. Uh, again, um, Duke is the team from the first game. If you remember, I said we 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 would not shock me if they were in this position and if they won it all. Uh, mm-hmm. Here they are. Um, there's a couple of factors that I think emotionally that play into this game, obviously. Uh, I don't think this Duke team goes down twice in a row to UNC here. I just don't think, I think they, there's a lot more we could say, look, the, both teams are going to be super motivated in this game, but it just seems to be that the extra motivation has got to go to uh, the blue devils here in this game. And look, the blue, they're firing offensively. They're a uh-huh. team that's firing on all cylinders here. Uh, Dropping, I mean, just even against Texas Tech, 78 points against it. Uh, a good yeah. Texas Tech defense. Um, and uh, Harry and I were talking about this too. They really run some really good sets. Uh, they get good looks consistently more than any other team in this tournament. Yep. Duke gets, finds good looks yep. all the time. So I think that, I just think uh, everything combined, I think Duke gets this game. So I really do. I'll just roll with Duke. I, not that. You know, I, I guess I'm not a dookie at all, but I'll take uh, let's you know take the you minus four here, and uh, I think they win by eight or nine points, eight or nine, eight or nine. Yep. All right, that's where right where I have it, seventy nine, seventy. By the way, favorite people like you know, then there's something to this, like oh, you know, it's such a rivalry. I'm just going to take the underdog favorites facing conference rivals. The last NC double, the last eleven uh, tournament games, eight and eleven. Sorry. Eight and three average margin of victory, 12 points a game. Um, and we know what coach K has done in the final four, nine and three average margin of victory, about 10 points. Uh, Harry, what do you got for this? Another total Sal. I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over 151. These rivals like to push the pace. The first meeting this season, 154 points. Second game was 94, 81. Blue Devils have scored 78 points three times in this tournament. The other game they scored uh, 85, two of the four tournament games for the Tar Heels. Over 90 points. Center play has been special on both sides. Baycott, since the Duke game um, in Cameron, has uh, is 48 of 81 from the field. And since the ACC final, Mark Williams, they don't look to him a lot down low, but he's been amazing since the ACC final. He's 28 of 34 from the field from that game. A lot of easy buckets down low for both centers. I got some Mark love for you in a minute. Yeah, I, I just, I can't imagine betting the over in any of these games. What is it, Brian? Like 10 and two, 12 and two, the last 14, 10 and two, the last uh, unders, the last 12 games under the lights. Like we talked about, I, it's just a, it's just tough to root for these overs. Uh, all right, Brian, you like Carolina. Yeah. I like Carolina getting the four, although I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if I should change it to the first half, just thinking that Duke maybe comes out a little tight, but mm-hmm. I could, I couldn't let take it off this easy. You know that we, if we all went Duke, we know what would have happened here. <laughs> uh, but UNC, UNC has actually been, I think over the, you know, over the last month, they've actually been playing better ball. And I, I, I'm wondering, you know, Duke has looked fantastic. I'm wondering how much it has to do with the matchups, right? Against Arkansas, Arkansas is a little undersized against Duke, against Texas Tech. Te- Texas Tech just eventually just didn't shoot well enough. 
you know, UNC, UNC has been dominating teams on the boards. They'll be able to match up size wise. Uh, you know, Duke doesn't shoot or make a lot of threes. So if the, if the UNC bigs can, you know, stay out of some foul trouble, I think they can at least keep it close. You know, UNC, like I said, they've been playing really well. They're eight and one against their spread in their last nine. They're always good as an underdog versus coach K. So maybe you won't get the fairy tale ending. I think this should be close though. So give me UNC uh, getting four. Well, one thing you have going for you is UNC after four plus rest days this season, 10 and 0 yeah. and eight and two against the spread. And by the way, four plus, I mean, the St. Peter's game shouldn't even count it's really <laughs> like it's basically six uh, games there. All right, let's go to the, our props here. Harry brought up Mark Williams. I like him to hit his uh, rebound total over nine and a half. It's minus one Oh six. He had 12 the last game versus Arkansas. I saw 35 minutes in that game. 13 versus Carolina in that ill-fated game in Cameron. Um, he's had 10 against Miami in the ACC semi, 16 versus Syracuse recently. I think a lot of bad shots coming up his way, both his team and uh, UNC. Uh, uh, like I said, shooting into the lights, not something people get used to or early on. Lots of opportunities for rebounds. I'm going Mark Williams over nine and a half rebounds, minus 106. Parley kid, we haven't mentioned Ben Carroll, but he's uh, he's been dynamite. That's right, Salomon Bakari. Talk about a guy. Has he elevated his status now to the possible first overall pick in the NBA draft? Yeah, maybe. Through this tournament, he's sure, sure playing like it. Um, what I like about him, he doesn't really rely on the three ball. Uh, if he's open, he'll shoot it. But uh, he's more, uh, you know, mid-range uh, guy, gets to the hoop guy, goes to the foul line guy, makes his foul shots. Don't discount the fact that's true. This Duke team shoots great free throws too, Sal. They are mm-hmm. a great free throw shooting team here too. But Boncaro himself, I love the way that he's playing. The moment does not seem too big for this kid. I think this game is going to eventually settle into a pretty high scoring game. Uh, 17 and a half is kind of right, right around where this guy is always sitting. Uh, But even in this tournament, he's been a little above that. So I'm going to ride with him. I think he plays uh, possibly his best game of the tournament here. I think he goes for 20 plus. Let's take uh, Paolo Boncaro over. 17 and a half points. Been solid. Averaging 18 and a half this tournament. Like you said, Roach right there with him, averaging 13. Good. Any of these guys shooting over 50% from the field. You got to go with them. Uh, although the overs are scary, just in general. Bri, you're going with uh, Manic over two and a half threes. I mean, I don't think an Amish player's ever made um, three threes in a game. <laughs> he, really, but, he, really, he really does look like it. I mean, he definitely, you know, he definitely seems like he's still on Oklahoma the way he looks, but um, yeah, yeah, over, I thought two and a half was actually pretty low for him. You know, Maddox has been great. Uh, I mean, he's been great kind of in this tournament has been great, but he's been great kind of all year. You know, he's had three or more threes in seven of his last eight games. He's mm-hmm. averaging eight and a half attempts so far in this tournament. And when you look back at the matchups against Duke in the two matchups, he shot five of 10 from three. And then the last game he shot six of 10 from three. So I, I feel like if you're getting a little bit of a steal here with the with value of over two and a half. So I, I'd say he knocks down three or more in this one. All right. Scary. We're all going over props here, Harry. Mm-hmm. You too. Yeah, I'm going to take RJ Davis over three and a half rebounds. I know it's a little pricey here at minus 170, but I'm looking. Yeah, you're not doing anyone favors uh, with not, these vigs on these props here. As long as they win, that's all that matters. 170. As long as I win, but I'm just, I'm looking for a lot of over props in this game in general, just because, and, and Davis has been great since the last Duke game. Um, he's, uh, he's, uh, had four boards in every game since that game, at least four. So I'm going to go over three and a half at minus 170. Like again, a little pricey here, but I'm going to take the over three and a half. Na, 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 na.